What's up, y'all? So on the podcast today, we have Blake Bennett. Blake Bennett spent eight years of his life in Tennessee State Prison, and he wants to use this platform to help others not reach that point in their lives, tell some wild stories, but mainly show the youth uh, the way to not end up there. So we're going to use this platform in a positive way. Blake Bennett is also a guy that I grew up with, lived in the same neighborhood uh, when we were very young for about five years. Growing up, all the way through high school together. So I think it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a wild one. But stay tuned for the ride. Let's get into the trivia. So I'm gonna go through five trivia questions. All right, let's ride. All right, so what is the most populated state in the United States? New York. Is that your final answer? think about that. I was about to say first the city I know is New York, but now you're saying state. Mm-hmm. It's hard for me to say. Uh, final answer. I'll just go with New York. Screw it. California. Cali? Cali. Man, well, I, hey, and that was my second choice, but I just was thinking New York City like so many people. Yeah, I, I think Cali... New York, Texas, and Florida, I think, are the the biggest as far as population. Um, oh, so Texas probably should have been my yeah. I'm, Texas probably would have been my second or third. And more people are moving to Texas too, so it, you know, I mean, it's growing all the time. Fast, it may catch it. So fast growing, bro. Um, so let's see. Second trivia question: What year? I'm gonna give you an option of of uh, you can give me a three year range because this is kind of a hard question. But what year did Fifty Cent come out with the song "In the Club," his most popular hit of all time? Oh shit! You can give me a three year range, and if it's anywhere in that three year range, I'll, I'll give it to you. Bro, I feel like my like manhood is getting tested bro like if i know this like i'm a sucker bro i i, I think you, uh, you've had enough of the manhood testing with your with the, the life bro, you've lived like, my you brother don't know this, bro. you're like who are you <laughs> um dang man like 2000 uh, and, um, 2005 what's your what's your range all right like, between 2004 and 2000 what three years? Yeah, yes, it was two thousand seven so. and two thousand four. Bro, I'm way off, ain't I? I can't tell you. Is that your final answer? Ah, uh, it's 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 earlier than that, isn't it? It's uh, let's go two thousand one to two thousand four. Two thousand one to two thousand four. Final answer? Yeah. You got that one, bro. It's two thousand three. Ah! <laughs> you were this close to missing it too. Let's go. All right, so you're one and one. You got three more. All right, who has more Instagram followers? Is it Barack Obama or The Rock? The Rock. Easy. That that was easy. Yeah, All right, you got that one. Yeah, all right, He's that, also the highest paid actor in America. Yeah, 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 dude. You can't. I don't think anybody. I mean, maybe one or two people in the world have more followers than him. He's got to be almost number one. So that that was kind of a, a an easy one there. That was you know you got it quick though. So all right, you got two right, one wrong so far. Two more left. What is the brand of the standard issue pistol in the U.S. military? Is it? Oh, I can tell you this one easy. The Sig. Uh, dang. It's a nine millimeter Sig. Uh, it don't have to be exact. That that just the brand is what I I needed. So you Sig. got it. You got it. I didn't even have. I was gonna give you a few brands just to narrow it down. If you didn't, but you already got it. That those last two were easy. All right. So you you got uh, three out of four so far. Bro, yeah, you making uh, a comeback yeah. after that first one? <laughs> yeah, I had to. All right, last one. We'll see if you can get four out of five. What? Now, this could be easy for some people may think it's hard just because we haven't uh, – this was when we were really young in school when we learned this. So what is an eight-sided shape called? Octagon. There you go. My boy. Let's go. All right, four out of five. Get me in there. Hey, you killed it. Let's go. 
All right, so the first topic, man, we're about to really get into it now. So we grew up in Memphis together, and then a big life event happened for you in your life where you get incarcerated, right? Yeah. What age did that happen? All right, so I started doing time, like, I was in and out, like, right towards the end of my senior year. It's when I really kind of jumped off the porch. I mean, uh... You know, I was, I kind of like moved out from my mom's, and I was in and out. Of, I would like live with Drew Dillard here and there, like you know, for months at a time. And rest in peace. I mean, home. I was just wide open, bro. Like balls against the wall, like you know. And then I would say, right about the end of seventeen, I was like, it was almost like the border of seventeen and eighteen, mm-hmm. which is the worst time to possible, you know, possibly start you know, testing those type of waters, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, right, probably about four months before I turned 18 is when I really started, like, playing with fire. Okay, and you said you were... I got locked up at 17. At twice. 17? Twice, okay, yeah. and then the, the long... Those are all, like, those, both of those, like, one-nighters, like, you know, weekenders, but it wasn't until I was 18 when I really, you know, caught... What, you know, what comes behind that. Okay. So when, when you were 18, so you went from 18, and that was your long stint? That's right? Yeah, I was 18. Uh, it was uh, July 3rd. I went to the penal farm and because uh, I violated 1129 in Bartlett. And then I went and did six months. All right. And then while I was there, like, they started an investigation for my robberies. And then that's when I got indicted. I got indicted a month after I got out of that six months. It was December of 2013. And then I think December uh, December 13th, 2020, I mean, uh, 2013, I didn't see daylight again for eight straight, eight and whatever, two months, something. How old were you when you got out? I was 26. Okay, so go in roughly 18 and get out at 26. So just to set the timeline, uh, you go in at 18, get out at 26. So yeah. before that, tell me a little bit about growing up and what got you to that point. Bro, honestly, uh, I mean, because you and I both know, I mean, what, the first time we ever hung out was, what, in Oakwood, the neighborhood? That's right, where we grew up. Let me come over. I remember you let me come over and we, like, shot pool and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Hell, yeah. You I see? remember that like it was yesterday, bro. I, 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 honestly, I want to say, like, I like I used to get nervous before, like, a fight or, you know, um, altercations. Or I get, like, butterflies in my stomach, and I used to think it was because, like, I was sleep like, you know, a bitch, bro. Like, it used to, it messed with my head. Mm-hmm. And, um, even though I know that's all a mind, my mind thing, it's not even like that. Uh, I felt like I had something to prove. Like, not even to other people, more to myself than anything. Mm. And, um, that was like fuel. It was like gasoline, throwing gasoline on fire, bro. And, and that really started making me like, I don't know, like once I, kind of got like the attention of, of uh, you know, like the stuff I was doing, almost kind of like liked it too much, you know, like fighting and, and just All the like wild doing stuff, stuff like, you know, clear as day that I shouldn't be doing, like I knew what I was doing, I knew I shouldn't be, but like the attention I got off of it and uh, the I, it was more the adrenaline I liked probably more than anything, like uh, the thrill and I just fed off of that, man. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it started out small things, you know, and um, I just thought, like, I was untouchable. I was, like, you know, a badass. Like, I always felt like I was different. Like, uh, you know, like, I didn't belong in, like, just a, a regular job or, you know, like, I, which is uh, absurd, but I felt like, you know, like, I'm not about to go work at McDonald's, like, you know, but I'll take McDonald's money, like, so, I don't know what, like, it was stupid, like, 
that's how I was thinking, like, at that, you know, in such a young mind frame and, like, so immature, but, like, I don't know, it's, it's hard to say, like, I just uh, felt like, like, my life was like a movie, and I was dealing with a lot at the time, and it was just one thing led to another, and, um, next thing you know, I was, you know, I was doing things that could have got me killed, it's a miracle I'm even here, you know? Um, so it felt like it kind of spiraled before you even realized it kind of, and it, it kind of jumped to another point? Yeah, yeah, uh, honestly, like, it, it really, like, just went from, like, little petty stuff to, like, all of a sudden, like, I was, like, you know, walking in trap houses and trying to make a deal or acting like I was a square, and then I was, you know, up and straps on anybody like you know anybody and everybody and uh yeah it definitely it definitely was like overnight like it was just like I was really doing dangerous things and like you know whenever I would get away with it or and you know or I would do it without you know unscathed like I don't know I just felt like I was on top of the world after that you know like, even if I didn't even get a lot of money, I just, the fact that I just did it and pulled it off, you know, just made me feel invincible. And that was, that was definitely uh, a huge factor to why I was start, you know, kept doing stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, it's hard to say, but it's definitely, that definitely plays a role in it. Yeah. Uh, more the, the rush than anything, you know, that's why I feel like my biggest mistake was not joining the military as soon as I turned 18, but, you know, by the time I tried to, which I'm still trying to do right now to this day, actually, uh, they mm -hmm. waive felonies, and uh, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to get in the Navy as we speak, but I wish I would have done that from the get-go. I could have tried to be a Navy SEAL or, you know, or anything like that. If I was looking for a rush, like, go get on the front line with the Marines or, mm -hmm. you know, instead of doing something so stupid. But I had no idea the type of time that could come with the stuff I was doing until it was too late, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, I probably would have pumped the brakes and second guessed a lot <laughs> of stuff. Yeah, you, know? you would have started thinking about, like, what what could, you yeah, know, what, what could come from this. For, you know, only getting a couple thousand here and there? Nah, bro. Like, yeah, start weighing those oh, options. Oh, it ain't like it ain't that serious. Yeah, I, I I agree with what you're saying too about the military. That that could have controlled that that itch for chaos a little bit and set you on a different path. Maybe created some habits in you that would have like kept you yeah. grounded and things like that, you know. And and obviously the military is a place where there is no room for for being too out of line because then you're going to be out immediately, you know, so it may have just like been exactly what you needed at the time. And also what you said about feeling like you had something to prove. I've talked about this in a podcast before too, or my podcast before, but I felt a, that same thing, but it was more directed to a, in a sports route, like I was like a smaller kid growing up, always felt like I never got the respect of what I knew I could do. And so every yeah. team I joined, all that, I felt like people didn't look at me like I was going to be good and I had to prove it. Whereas some kids just walk on the court and you're like, damn, I bet he's good. You know what I mean? He may not even be good, but I had to go prove that. Or with fighting, even with, you know, in school and stuff, felt like nobody looked at me and immediately thought oh i bet he's a badass or gave me the respect of being able to fight so i felt like i would need to fight to prove it to them you know what i mean and i feel like yeah. that's in a lot of young men yeah and I, bro i honestly believe it is such a uh, mental toughness thing it's it's all in your head bro like i don't even think you realize like you were like like uh, like og to me like, like i used to look up to you like mad looked up to you bro and like you were always like that dude and I, but I could see where like you know in your head like it might have been like that but that's all in your head you know yeah yeah and that's how it was for me too like I don't know I just felt like I always had something like a chip on my shoulder like I had to like prove that I was like really about that life or you know not only will I say that but I'll show you or you know but it's so dumb bro it's not like that you know the real world, it doesn't work like that, you know? Yeah. The, and, 
Yeah. The older you get, the more we we realize it's you know when we're young, we're so like we're so craving to like prove to everyone who we are and what we are. But like you said too, it really a lot of it's just proving it to ourselves more than it is proving yes. it to everyone else. But you don't realize that you feel like you're it's everyone else that you need to show that you're this. But kind of you're you're proving to yourself along the way that you're that, and. Uh, you know that it's just got to be directed in in the right direction and then once you get old enough like even the age we are now we realize that like it's the guy that doesn't have to prove anything is the ones you got to watch out for you know that's the guy that's actually a hard ass that's actually exactly. tough that's actually this the one that's all chill and calm is the one you worry about not the one that's up yelling and acting like he's a hard ass you know what i mean exactly and it's just like that behind the wall too bro yeah, it is. It's like that in prison. Say a word. It's a guy that slit your throat in your sleep. That's probably. I bet some guys are, are even like they almost have an eerie feeling to them because they don't say anything. Probably. Bro, as soon as you get around them, bro, you know immediately this guy will kill something. Man, that's something I've never experienced, bro. That's a very unique, unique life experience, bro. But that's why we're here. We're going to get into a lot of that here in a second. Uh, so. Next thing I wanted to ask, so so let's go with, let's kind of get into your time in the pen, right? So what was the charge? Uh, so I got, I had three counts of aggravated robbery. Um, but, but, all right, so like everything I've ever gotten like serious trouble for, uh, I was on Xanax. Okay. So future reference for anybody, Xanax is not the thing to do. Um not if you have any intentions on doing something that like you need to be calculated and uh, <laughs> you know focused. Yeah, uh, you will not be, and you will fail. Um, but uh, yeah, I uh, got charged with three counts of aggravated robbery. Um, I had three ran concurrent uh, into one sentence, which was a nine to eighty-five percent. But technically, I do have three felonies. And that's what's hurting me right now to getting in the military is because they do allow, you know, one serious misconduct. But uh, technically, I do have three. Even though it was ranked concurrent into one, it's really it's really three. So when you three say about. ran concurrent, does that mean there was three separate robberies they put into one case to try to give you more time? Yeah, so they, they can run consecutive. Like, all right, say if I would have if I would have took it to trial and I lost, they could hit me, all right, one count carries 8 to 12 at 85%. They can do, what they could do is if I did lose in trial, they could say, all right, well then we're going to hit you with three separate tens. You're going to do, you're going to finish one ten, which would be eight and a half, and you're going to start the next eight and a half out of ten. Because you're going to do eight and a half out of ten, which is 85%. You're gonna do day for day. Okay. Now you're gonna get good time because in 2012 they changed the law from 30 uh, percent to 85 percent for aggravated robbery because Memphis was it was rampant like everybody was doing it so much. So they changed the law on it. Basically made it fed time. You were gonna do day for day. You weren't gonna get you know a year knocked off or no. You're gonna do your time. You're gonna do every day of it. So that's that's how your sentencing went down from from when you got into when you got out you did every day. Yep. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Matter of fact, I did a little extra because uh, uh, disciplinaries and you know stuff happening in there. Right. Okay. Gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. So. Yeah. Eighty-five percent of nine is seven point two, mm-hmm. and I did eight, a little over eight. So, so you had, I, I supposed to get out almost a year before I did. Okay, gotcha. All right, so when when you first go in, first day, <laughs> <laughs> tell tell me about that. Tell me some stuff maybe you did wrong, what you did right, or like what you were thinking going in. Did you have anyone to tell you anything about it? Did you just wing it? Like how did that go? Um. Okay, so I was at. 201 Poplar for, I mean, hell, they, they rap about, it. even Drake, the rapper Drake raps about the fourth floor <laughs> and 201. 
Yeah. Which is where I was for a year. So I already like, you know, I was already where it was going down before I even went to prison. So, I mean, I guess you could, you could include that like my first day, really just kind of getting around some people that are, you know, you don't want to be around. But, um, that's also where I kind of got the rundown on like, you know, like talking to, it's amazing what you can learn from, you know, old schools or, you know, uh, what people would say like, you know, OG or like, I would sit there and we'd be playing chess or spades or whatever. And I, you know, older guys that have already done, you know, 10 or, you know, 20 pieces or something like that, they would give me the rundown on things and like what to expect. And, uh, that's crucial. You know, you need to know these things like before you walk <laughs> in to the penitentiary, cause it is a different ball game, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you said the question was like, what was like one of the first things I had to learn or? So it, is there anything you did wrong your first day in that you didn't know about or, or things uh, that you purposefully said thing, I'm not doing? Yeah, no, first thing first is uh, trying to like talk to everybody, be friends with everybody or that was mistake one. And that's your personality too, ain't it? Yeah, that, so. yeah that's my personality, bro. <laughs> right. I can't help it. Yeah. That's really hard for me. Yeah. Like, I'm just outgoing, like, like excessively, and I can't even, like, control it. Mm -hmm. And that's not the place for that. Like, bro, you got to keep your head down and your mouth shut. And I struggled with that bad. Yeah. I mean, I was immediately, like, thinking everybody, like, me and him are, are tight, like, you know, and all that. But it's not like that, bro. They will cross you in a New York minute. Yeah. And that's that was my mistake one, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so over your time, what level of uh, prison or prisons were you at? Um, so over time, my entire sentence, I had been... All right, there's 14 prisons in Tennessee. Uh -huh. Were you only in Tennessee? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because if it's state, you, you don't go outside of the state. Gotcha, okay. Uh, only the feds go outside of the state. But... Uh, Unless you're, like, top dog, like, you know, like, like, for what I'm uh, a part of, you know, our top dog, like, they shipped him to, like, Arizona, and then they shipped one of the other ones to, you know, that, I mean, they ship him around, like, the country if they can't control them or they're too powerful. Hmm. But obviously, I wasn't one of those guys, so, yeah, I stayed in Tennessee the entire time. Okay. You might be in the cell with somebody that's got three life sentences, or you might be in the cell with somebody that's got like a one year, two year sentence, you know? Okay. Because so, you got to think a lot of these small towns like are like, all right, not everybody has a penal farm like Memphis does, you know? Mm -hmm. So like if you're in Columbia or you're in Jackson, Tennessee or, you know, this guy in Jackson, he might have killed 20 people, but the other guy in Jackson, you know, he, he's got a two year sentence. They don't have a penal farm. They go straight to prison, mm. you know? Okay. So when you first get in, were you by yourself in your cell, or did you have a cellmate? Uh, yeah. When I first got, all right. So I went to transit. You don't you don't go directly to, like, where you're gonna be at for your long stay. Okay. You go to it's it's a process, bro. Like it really is. Like you, all right. Like soon as I I was in the hole when I got picked up for prison. Uh, at two hundred one, I was in the hole. I was doing 30 days for fighting on the basketball court. <laughs> and um, somebody called me a bitch on the basketball court. <laughs> and we, we went at it. But he split me, though. He split me good, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, so I got shipped. Like, all of a sudden, they said, pack your stuff. You're going to state. And uh, so I started packing up. Uh, it's, reality started setting in, like, you know. And uh, now I'm not the only one packing my stuff. There's, you know, probably about six or seven of us in the hole that got shipped that day. Yeah. Because they're trying to get you out of 201, bro. It's so overpopulated. I don't know from experience, but I would assume it's got to be. The way Memphis is, bro, it's got to be so overpopulated <laughs> up bro, in there. it's bad. It's real bad. Like, like uh, hygiene, like, the I don't know how to even put it in words. Like, 
it's nasty. Was and that a wake up call? Was that something you expected oh, or knew to expect? Time. Big time, bro. Money back yeah, he talks about that and they want to see me on lower level. I mean, I think that was the first time I really just cried my eyes out was on lower level. I mean, you're basically underneath the jail, like, and the cell is just so small, and I felt like the walls were caving in on me. Mm. That was, like, the first time it really sunk in, like, damn, I, I screwed up, you know? Damn. Uh, it, it really hit me that, that night, you know, probably the first two or three nights, you know, when I realized, like, you're not going anywhere, and you're going to be here in this situation for a long time, you know? Yeah. Lower level, that's probably... That was my reality reality check. Yeah. So, so when you... I, I, you're going to sit on lower level for about 30 days almost. Maybe more now because it's so hard to get on the floor. But is that a, now people sit down there six months and stuff. Is that a punishment or is that just part of the process? That's part of the process. It's like uh, lower level is like uh, basically classification for 201. And um, you're going to sit down there. Initially, probably 30 to six months now is what I heard. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're going to sit down there. You're not going to come out the cell, but maybe 30 minutes to an hour a day. And the cell is like half the size of a normal cell. Oof. You don't, like I said, like you don't have to prove anything. Like People are going to know what's up with you just by your, your, uh, like your demeanor. Yeah, your, your demeanor, your vibe, how, you know, how you carry yourself. And uh, if you ain't got nothing to prove, bro, you ain't got nothing to prove. Uh, it should be that on that. Like, it's understood, you know? Mm -hmm. And there, there is such a thing as overdoing it, you know? Like, and if you overdo it, then people are going to be like, you know what, I'm about to make him show me, you hear me? Yeah. And, like, that happens a lot, you know? You can definitely act too tough or... You know, and you don't want to be the guy that acts too tough because a lot of people are going to be like, I think he's all tough, you know, yeah. and we're about to find out, watch, you know, something like that. And um, so I came in, you know, the first time I, I think I was ever in the cell with somebody where, like, I kind of had to, like, you know, establish, you know, what was up with me. Um, I think, yeah, like, I, I was like, what's up, man? You know, I just kind of, like, threw my mat down and stuff like that. And I was on the door, like, I really didn't say anything to him or, you know. I just kind of, like, didn't even acknowledge him because I was still trying to, like, figure out what was going on. I was trying to get a hold of the CO on the door. and <clears throat> But, like, I immediately knew I was in the cell with somebody that, you know, had a screw loose. Oh, so you and, did uh, get, you did end up with a celly like that? Yeah, it was, I immediately, like, I got, what I was hoping that would not happen, happened. Oh, and I got in the show with somebody that was, like, not all there, bro. And he was bigger than me. And uh, I'm pretty sure he was in there for killing his stepdad with a hammer or something Ooh. like that. Uh, yeah. I mean, he, he, he was definitely messed up in the head, bro. I mean, he... And, uh, matter of fact, that's who gave me that scar. I don't know if you can see it, but right there. Yeah, I can see it. That's who gave me that one. And so he, Damn. that was with his hand, or he hit you with something? Uh, locking his eye. Uh, I've heard, I've heard of that one from YouTube video. So a, li a literal, like, lock in a sock, right, is what it is? Yeah, just imagine, like, a combination lock, you know, from high school or something. Uh-huh. And throw that in a tube sock, tie a knot. And just imagine someone swinging that and hitting you across the head with it. So y'all, y'all had beef, and he did that, or he just was so loose screw that it just, he just did it. It, it was partially my fault too. Uh, I don't know exactly why he did it for sure, because by the time it happened, I mean it looked like a murder scene in the cell after Oof. we were done. But uh, I'm, I'm almost positive it was because, like, like I said, he, he's crazy, bro, and. He, like, went number two, like, used the restroom, you know, and, like, we're talking about, like, we're in the cell together, so, you, like, you have to be, like, Sally, I'm about to go to the bathroom, like, you know, and, like, you, like, roll over on the bed, kind of, like, you know, give them their privacy and stuff, and, like, I just remember he didn't, like, wash his hands after, 
And I said something to him like, bro, like you're tripping. Like, wash your hands. Like, if you're gonna touch my tray, bro, wash your hands. And uh, like, he didn't say anything right then, but in his head, he was like, oh, I'm about to do something to this guy. And he waited till I went to sleep. Damn. Uh, that's what I woke up to. Woke up to the the lock in the sock. Yeah. Damn, dog. Uh, and that was, yeah, that was probably the first moment where I, you know, I knew my life was borderline here or, or gone. Yeah. So I saw stars, bro. It woke me up, but like it almost—it's it, crazy, like how you can be unconscious, but like get woken up but go unconscious at the same time. Again. Yeah, like you almost got knocked out type of thing, waking up. Yeah, like I almost got knocked out even though I was already unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. It was crazy. So and like immediately the first thing I saw when I when I I'm on the top bunk because uh-huh. you know he was already on the bottom and stuff. And uh, when it hit me, boom, like, I, like, rolled off the bunk. And I remember, I don't know why, but I remember I said, what are you doing? Something like that. And I remember seeing, like, a big drop of blood drop and hit the concrete. Like, hit the concrete. That was, like, the first thing I saw. I remember that, like, it was yesterday. And then that's when I realized I was gushing. And uh, we just started going at it. Boom, boom, boom. And I mean, we're throwing, we're throwing them hard, and uh, he's still trying to swing that lock in the sock. But like, I'm in my socks, and now, two of one. If you're in the like, if you're in the cell, like when you first get there, they they try to take your shoes, and a lot of people they do take them. And uh, I managed to keep mine, but um, I mean, you basically have to threaten to like smash the CO right there, like to keep your shoes. <laughs> And uh, like I was like determined to keep on, and um, but this guy hit now he was wearing Crocs. Some people come in there without shoes, you know. And he was wearing Crocs, but I was the floor is dusty, bro, and I was in socks. And that's mistake too. When you go to sleep, take your socks off. So you got some grip. <laughs> yeah, take your socks off, bro. Yeah. I hit that ground and I'm throwing, but I, as I'm throwing, I'm I'm sliding. Like, I, I'm not really just, like, you know, planting my feet and just yeah. drilling into them. You ain't exactly and, got time uh, to lace up. Yeah. And I'm sliding, and then, bro, he's getting off on me bad. Like, he's really laying them on me. Like, I'm telling you, this guy could fight, too. On top of being psycho. On top of being psycho, he's, yeah, he's throwing hands. Like, I mean, it was like Addison or something like in there with me, bro. I mean, he was beaming bad and like I was doing everything in my power to just you know get whatever I could in but it wasn't working bro and uh yeah and like not to mention like the blood's running in my eyes and stuff like I can't see yeah and at one point like I managed to just like get a hold of them wrap them up but like my back's up on the table and I got them like that I put him in a headlock, but there's so much blood running that his chin starts to slip out of my arm. Mm. And now, I get, think about it, my back's already on the table, so I'm like, he's on top of me already. And this cell's so small, the table's right here, the toilet's right here next to me. So if I fall in between the table and the toilet, oh, I'm in trouble. It's OV, he's yeah. on top of me, and I'm stuck in between these two things. Yeah. So it's like I fell in like a trench. And, like, he's just right there. And, bro, that's exactly what happened, bro. He, uh, his chin slipped out, and I said, oh. like, I immediately, like, I knew I was in trouble, bro. And my back slipped off the table, and I fell right in between the toilet and the table. And, I mean, he was on me, like, white on rice, bro. I'm talking about, he was feet, hand, feet, hand. And he was just, I mean, he was on me. And, uh... I remember just like a, a split second, bro. I managed to get my foot like up on his chest. And I just, you know, and I, that split second, I remember like scrambling like off the toilet, like with everything in my power. Like I was desperate, bro, to get out of there. Just to get out from in between the toilet and the table, bro. Right. Where I was stuck at. 
and I like scrambled like you know I remember my hand went off in the toilet and everything like to get out of there and I got out and I remember just being like so relieved like like that I just managed to pull that off and bro we fought for probably it had to been 30 minutes 45 minutes maybe straight and I managed to wrap him up again like after he once I got out of that little spot like I mean, he definitely, like, put hands on me pretty solid for another, like, probably 30 seconds to a minute. But I ended up grabbing him. And, uh, because I was pretty solid at wrestling. But once I got a hold of him, like, I'm putting my feet on the wall, like, everything to keep this guy from flipping me, bro. Yeah. I'm talking about, like, <laughs> my feet that touch the ceiling. That's just a, like, I'm doing everything to keep this man from, like, just dropping me on my shit, you know? <laughs> and... Bro, like, by then, bro, like, my nails had already, like, it was like a saw scene, bro. My nails had already came all the way back off, of, you know. Like, they were completely broken backwards. Yeah. You know, my feet were, like, I don't even know what happened to my feet. The socks were, one was, like, halfway off, one was completely off. But, like, you know, I'm slipping on blood, like. And, uh, yeah, he, uh, I grabbed him and I held on to him for dear life, bro your life and I remember someone saying hey Blake this is before I got the nickname White Ghost uh, but someone was like hey Blake and uh, it was somebody that liked me we were pretty cool and it was crazy he's the complete opposite thing I was but he was like hey Blake he said man fuck it they fighting in five cell and you're not supposed to do that that's like police shit but like they, I guess they just, like, didn't want to see me, like, you know, because at first they were like, beat his ass, Blake, because they can hear everything, and you can hear it all, because, like, these are real thin metal walls. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you can just hear, doo, 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 doo. like, it's loud. And uh, at first they were like, beat his ass, beat his ass. And, like, they wanted me to whoop him, but, like, bro, that's just not what was happening. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then finally, like, dude was like, Man, fuck it, they fighting in five cell. And then, because the CO, it's, this is at nighttime, bro. So the CO done left our pod. He's got to go to two other pods and come back. Yeah. So imagine, that's why it took so long for him to even realize something was going on. Right. He waited, that dude waited for the CO to leave that pod, our, our pod, mm. go to two other pods, then come back for another round. So however long that was, 30, 45 minutes, it was something like that. I mean, we were in there, bro. I'm talking about it was a long time. And then on top of all that, bro, finally the CO comes up to the door and he looks in and he sees it and you just hear him like, oh shit, like, and like he thought one of us was probably already dead and he starts hitting on the radio and they come flying and then they open the flap and they just like drill us with mace like full throttle. I'm talking about empty the can on us, man. Damn. And uh, I'm sitting here like, bro, like, just get me out of here. <laughs> and I'm like, why are you macing me, bro? I'm like yeah. completely, like, worthless now. Yeah. Like, finally the door rolls, bro, and I remember, because my back was against it. I still got him wrapped up. My back's against the door. I remember, like, feeling like my spine was breaking because it was, he had it up against the door so hard. And he's still, like, trying to, like, get loose. And, like... Finally, the door rolls, and I just fall out. I fall out of there, and then I, like, start hyperventilating. I, like, you know, and I, I passed out. I went unconscious for a second. Damn. It was like my adrenaline kept me, you know, awake. Yeah. But, like, soon that door rolled, and I knew that, like, I made it to the other side, I completely went out. So was that, was that, the, was that the wildest fight? That you no, had been in? No, not no, even no. close? That was, that was just the first one. Okay, okay, okay. That and that's the first a... time I realized that I wasn't as jacking as I thought I was. <laughs> we, we, yeah. all, we all meet that day if you fight enough, yeah. don't we? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. when it's not in, like, okay, bro, you thought you could fight, but you can't. You yeah. got a long ways to go, bro. So, and the reason why I asked the wildest fight story, I kind of already knew based on some other conversations we had that it probably wasn't, but... To let everybody at home know, like, y'all hear that? That that sounds it, 
crazier than what most people ever experience in their life. You know what I mean? And that wasn't the wildest thing that you experienced. So, so when you're when you're in there, and you're affiliated with a group of people, well, gang. However, did y'all? How do y'all refer to you, yourselves in there? Um, by sword, I'm no longer like you know on counter active anymore. But um, it's an organization, and you know I. That's just who I like was drawn to. Um, they call themselves players, players, and uh, uh, it's all about you know. See, one thing that they do go by is like. You know, like Islam, like like the Muslim like rules and like all that, but mm-hmm. like that was like a big deal for me. Like I was like, you know, I believe in Jesus Christ. Like I'm a Christian. If that's something that you know, if that's a deal breaker, then this is not something for me. Right. You know, because I wasn't willing to go, you know, away from that. I, you know. I believed in, in Christ and I was a Christian and I, I wasn't willing to change that. Assuming that that wasn't a deal breaker for them? No, it's not. It's just the rules. You don't have to be Muslim to be by sword. It's just that's they go by like, you know, the rules and uh, the way their way of life, you know, cleanliness and our hygiene and, you know, stuff like that. Like, that's just part of, you know, they, the way the laws were written. But it's not... You know, it's not like that. Like, you don't have to be Muslim or anything like that, you know. You have to learn, you know, a bunch of things. and But, like, they, they were who I was drawn to, you know. Whenever, like, I first, like, got into altercation in the pod and general population, like, they were all, like, uh, like, you know, they were, on, you know, off to the side on the sidelines, <laughs> like, oh, that white boy hard on him or something like that. And, like I just liked them. I, I liked the way they carried themselves. Like they always like considered themselves different, and like you know I had swag to them, and like they called themselves players, bro. Like and they they were considered the guys that like you know the females were the best at getting at females, and like I, that's what I thought I was too. So <laughs> you know, like that's just who I was instantly clicked with. You know. Yeah. There's different tribes, and like I, I'm unknown, UVL, so it's unseen, unheard, unknown. Which that I felt like that fit me because I was a white guy from you know from suburbs, and so like, I could play both sides, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm unseen and unheard and unknown. You won't know what I am or who I am until the shit hits the fan. And I felt like that's where I belonged, you know. Okay. So that's who I that's who I went with. I was ghost mob. Okay, so when when you when you made that decision, did you feel like you needed to do that for protection purposes, or did was it something you chose without thinking you had to do it? You just wanted to go do it. Uh, honestly, bro, I uh, I had already got the rundown from plenty of people. Like, bro, you, you don't have to be anything. You can keep your head down mind your own business and you don't have to be affiliated but I like camaraderie I like loyalty and and I like you know I like that like brotherhood type thing and um, once I kind of got like a feel of that like because that's what they call each other you know this is my brother my brother my sister my love for you began at birth like it's like a real, it's like a real brotherhood, and like, even though, now don't get it twisted, like, they're cutthroat, they'll cross you out in a heartbeat, but, like, there is some that, like, genuinely stand on that, and they believe that, you know, and when they say that you're my brother, they, they mean it, you know, like, they're willing to lay down their life for you, and vice versa, and when I felt that in there, like, I haven't felt that in a long time, so, like, I don't know, like, I just like uh, I fell in love with it, you know, like because I, I needed that at that moment, you know. Mm-hmm. I needed that type of camaraderie and and someone that's kind of stand by my side and for you know remind me that like hey you got this or you know this is nothing to you this is small to a giant and that's what a lot of them did for me. 
So I, I was, uh, I got sucked into it. I got sucked into it quick. Do you think you would have been as good off mentally? Like you, you, you seem to think that it helped you to an extent, or you needed it at that time. Do you think you would have been worse uh, off or better off without it? I think I've been better off without it. Okay. I mean, because one thing about it, bro, like, once you get involved in that, it's not just your problems. Anybody within's problems are your problems, too. My mm-hmm. problems are your problems. Your problems are my problems. A lot of wild stuff like that, going on. You're supposed to stand on that. And whatever, you know, he's your brother, bro. Like, if, if something's going on with him, it's going on with you. You ain't got a choice. You're either going to roll with him or you're going to get rolled on. Okay. Maybe the people at home don't know. I, I know from experience in being around Memphis that, that that's a black organization, right? So tell everyone about what it felt like being a white guy going into that situation. Was it 10 times harder for you? Were they skeptical on letting you join? Like, how did that go? Uh, honestly, bro, like, I, I want to say it was like the early 90s or they started allowing – white guys you know become the people mm-hmm. and uh you know by then you know there's white cribs bloods white gd like everything and yeah like it became a normal thing and you know, there's a lot of a lot of brothers look at you and they're, they're never going to acknowledge you as like their actual brother like you know mm-hmm. they're like once upon a time white people weren't allowed in this like that's how it should be. That's how it should always be. Like you know, they, they that's what they believe. And uh, you just kind of you got to know who who's like that and who's not like that. You know, like yeah, I knew I had just joined something where like I was gonna always be the odd one out, or you know, I was always outnumbered. You know, and uh, but like. It's not like out out here in Arizona or California where it's based off race. Out here, it's based off race. Out there, it's based off what what you are, what you're affiliated with. It doesn't matter what color you are. So there that's pretty no much how it was. No, yeah, like out in California and, and Arizona, I mean, there is like you know the Aryan Brotherhood and Aryan Nation, like the white gangs. Mm-hmm. They do carry weight because this is where they started in California and stuff like that, but in Tennessee, bro, like, maybe a little bit out east, but, uh, bro, they don't care anyway, like, they're severely outnumbered, and the majority of them are all on drugs, and, you know, like, they don't have enough money to, to, to even remotely, like, do anything, like, go to war or anything like that, and, bro, like, they... They're non-existent, pretty much, is what I'm saying. Like, they would never stand a chance against somebody like us or, you know, any of the other ones. Right. You know? Okay. So it's either you're going to be one of these, you're going to be either Crip Blood, G or Buzz Lord. If you're not one of those, bro, you're nothing. Yeah. Okay. You know? So what... If you want to have a cell phone or anything like that in prison, bro, you're going to you're gonna be a part of one of those or you're not going to have that. They're going to take that in a heartbeat. Okay. So what about, uh, like, number-wise? Uh, was the gang that you were in, like, did y'all have the numbers in the prison, or were, was the numbers against y'all? How, how did that go? It, it's give or take. Like, it depends on where you're at, you know. Uh, it can – you might go in one pod, bro, and there might be more bisoids than, than all of them combined. But then you might go in the next pod, bro, and you might be like – there's 50 crips in there and then you know there's only 10 vice loads you know and like but you still gotta hold your ground you know like you're gonna find out who's who real quick you know who who actually is with you and who's not you know yeah cause obviously whoever's got the numbers they're gonna be pushing their weight around yeah I can only imagine (laughs) yeah you're gonna find out real quick like Okay, they're on some bullshit. They know they're on some bullshit, but they don't care though because there's 50 of them and there's only so many of us. Right. And they're gonna they're gonna put you to the test like on a daily basis. All right, so let's talk about weapons in the joint. So like, how are they made? What are they made with? 
do were you ever in I'm assuming and some stories we talked about fights where weapons are involved you know like tell us about that uh obviously I mean yeah they got knives you know very very rarely are they you know stolen from the kitchen or anything almost everything in the kitchen they have like things that are bolted down that you can cut meat with or you know they don't hand you a a butcher knife Mm -hmm. you know now I have seen it before but it's very rare they don't have to do that bro they cut them off the tables I mean you go in a cell and some tables are completely gone so or like they the pot, cut the pot will have the table and the pot will have half the table like already cut off. So they cut the metal from the table and make it into a knife, is what you're saying? They get some guy, get them wired on meth or whatever. And tell them I want this cut off of this. It'd be like that. Damn. Cut that off of this table. Steel. And then they'll tape sandpaper on a fan blade. I mean, on the middle of the fan that spins. Mm-hmm. Run the blade up and down the sandpaper. Is the table thing with like making it with the metal from a table? Is that the most common way? Uh, yeah. I mean, like, cause you got these little like metal tables in the cell, like that are off the wall, just like little platforms, you know, where you can put like your hygiene or whatever, or your TV on top of it. And uh, yeah, bro, they. They'll sit there and they'll they'll run like a, you know those little black clamps that you clamp papers with the big ones. Mm-hmm. They'll have those real sharp and they'll just sit there and run that. Like I'm talking about, it takes days. Yeah, yeah. Probably about like some up to like a week, two weeks or something. But they get it done, bro. They get it off there, and I mean, though I've seen some like all the way as long as like lawnmower blades, you know. <laughs> I, I've actually seen lawnmower blades too stolen and turned into samurai swords. They call them samurais. Oh my like, god, bro! You don't even have to poke with them. You can you can slash. Yeah. Like a real sword, like you're wielding a sword. So what about so hiding these things, bro? All right, so that's the tricky part. Now a lot of that, a lot of them. They, I mean, when shakedown comes and they search the whole pod and stuff, I mean, they already know they're going to lose those, you know? But they don't really care, bro. You got enough money, it doesn't really matter. Um, but for the most part, all right, so like cell phones and knives usually get put up inside the wall or the ceiling or something. Mm-hmm. But also, they'll have someone wired or some sit there and... They'll have them, like, I have, you'll have my celly will switch with your celly. All right, I need him and myself for, like, all night so he can do this. And they'll sit there and they'll just chip at the wall until they get a hole in the wall so big that basically would, you know, fit, like, say, 20, 30 knives in it. And, you know, because uh, it's hollow after the you get through it, you know? Mm-hmm. So they'll get through it, they'll get the hole open, and then it's pretty much open after that. And then you can fit, you know, 20, 30 knives, maybe more than that, you know, depending on how, you know, it's the architecture, you know, how it is up in there. Mm -hmm. And then, but it's real easy for stuff to fall off in there, and like, once it falls in there, it's gone. You know, like, you have to make sure you know where it's sitting and what's it's, what it's sitting on or, you know, you know, like, how far it goes in there or does it drop off right here, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Because if, if it falls in down a crevice or something like that, it's a wrap, bro. And you don't want to do that with your phone or someone else's phone. If you do it with someone else's phone, you're in debt. Mm. Um, yeah. Like, the most I've seen was, like, probably, like, 50 knives go in a wall, like, and then probably like 10 or 10 or 12 cell phones at one time went in there with the chargers too damn and like there I mean we're talking about like a hold like that big but like inside of there it's like a it's open <laughs> so the they make are you, they make the hole to where when the the COs come check they can't they can't see it or they cover it up with something uh, yeah, so they'll start with, like, uh, like all right, if you don't have enough time, I've seen people, like, just wet some tissue and just, like, kind of 
put it over it, and mm -hmm. then it dries, mm -hmm. and it just looks like white, like, you know? But, like, they're coming in there with broomsticks, and they're hitting the wall. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom, 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 all the way up the wall and stuff. So if they hit that tissue, it's over with, bro. They're in there. But uh, what they do is they make grout. Grout, like, uh, almost like homemade concrete. Wow. And, uh, you know, you pay the maintenance, man. You already got, like, uh, the paint that the, that the prison has, so you make that grout with the fake concrete once you go over that you put the tissue there and then go over that with the grout smooth it over now it's as hard as like the concrete already was so and, this uh, is it's damn near it's perfect though, so a broomstick hitting it hard enough might bust it so you gotta you gotta do a couple layers and like you gotta know what you're doing yeah i mean there's some guys in there that are cold at it bro i'm talking about real good oh i bet they had a lot of practice <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, and then it, like it looks like there was never anything there. Probably you know? some dudes that worked in some some construction that <laughs> can do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of especially a lot of the Mexicans are are good at stuff like that. Damn, so it's damn near a perfect operation at that point. It looks like you know a professional did it. Yeah, yeah, they paint over it, bro, and I swear you can't even tell nothing ever happened to the wall. All right, so so what about this? This is gonna be a little bit of a, a crazy question, especially for people. They've never been to prison. So in some videos I've seen like online and stuff, this may not be your experience, but we're going to see. They talk about even some people even hiding weapons up the like numbers. Inside them? Yeah, inside themselves. Now, I've seen, I've heard of stuff like that. Um, you know, like if you, if you watch like Gangland or like on YouTube, like videos, like, yeah, there's people that have like snuck stuff to the yard or shanks or whatever and it was inside of them but bro they didn't have to do that where i was at like bro they're going through the metal detector I and mean, there's people like on facebook live and stuff like walking down the hallway and stuff like it's uh -huh. wide open bro yeah, they, don't yeah. give a, they don't give a shit bro and if the co says anything they're gonna smash them right there so i assume that's probably more of like a federal prison and, thing yeah it's more it depends on what state you're in and like you know like, just recently, they made the law in Tennessee, like, if you get caught with a cell phone, it's five years at 100%, mm. added to your sentence. Ooh, so that's you're a... five years day for day. Uh, Damn. I mean, that's crazy. I can't even imagine. Like, it wasn't like that when I was there. Like, it wasn't a big deal if you got if you got caught with a phone, like, worst case scenario. If you couldn't pay the the inmate, like, lawyer or whatever to, to get your thing, you can make it disappear, though. If you have enough money, you can pay to get that right up thrown out. And they weren't doing that when I was there, but now uh, I wouldn't even want to have a phone because I heard, like, literally you're going to get five years if you get caught. I can only but, imagine that, bro. Five more years. Yeah. Bro, five years. <laughs> like, that's crazy. <laughs> but the, the whole the shame going inside you type thing, bro, that's not like... That's not a thing. Like, where I was at, the the metal detector goes off, and they'll just, like, ransack it. Like, a uh, hundred people go through it, and it's just going beep, 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 like, nonstop. But, like, <laughs> how is a couple COs going to stop that, you know? Damn. Like, they just all keep going. They push past them. Watch out. They, <laughs> they it's just there, not bro. enough manpower, or they just don't care enough. Or, they, you know, it's going to get, they're going to get around yeah, it either way. Bro. Like, they can't stop it. All right, so tell me, what's the craziest fight, brawl, like someone bringing a weapon out and just like doing damage? Like, what's the wildest thing you saw your whole time? Oh, God. Um, not with me, just something I saw, you know? Yeah. Or if you would yeah. rather, if, if the craziest thing is, is you and you want to talk about that, you can do that. Uh, hands down, the craziest thing with me is when uh, I was beefing with bro and them, and I wasn't like they weren't riding with me at the time. Like I kind of got into it with them, and uh, I was alone. I was riding solo for a while, and mm -hmm. uh, I got <clears throat> one of the GDs uh, bombed on me at the phone. I was on the, uh, on the I didn't have a cell phone at the time. I was on the blue box out in the pod, and I, out of nowhere, because I think I owed him like $10 to commissary or something, 
and like I forgot about it like something so small that I forgot and uh, I had nowhere but this guy's got like three life sentences bro he does not care and he just comes out of nowhere and he he catches me good too I'm talking about uh, rock me and I was sitting down already so I, boom I hit my back but like I'm pretty quick like especially once you're adrenaline run you really see how fast and like what you're capable of it's a different level when you go through something like that. Like you're a lot faster and stronger than you thought you were. Mm-hmm. And um, so, boom! Like I scram, I get to my feet, and I take. I remember taking like a few steps back, and I knew there was a rail behind me. But without looking, I just kind of like took. I took that back step over it. Like it's almost like everything slows down, mm-hmm. and like, but you're moving a thousand miles an hour. And uh, I remember. I, I laid, me and him made eye contact, and I pulled my knife out, and then I got out in the open. And I was like, it's just me and you. And I thought me and him were going to go at it. And I, I, by then, I'm already, like, convinced, like, okay, I got him. Like, you know, you got to have that mindset, or otherwise you already, you lost already, you know? And uh, right as I'm, like, right as I'm about to connect with him I realized it's one two three four five six seven eight like like in rows like it was eight in every gap and then eight behind that and then like two coming down the steps two coming down the steps on this side like and then that's when it hit me that I was so outnumbered like by like 25 to 1 or something you know mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh like I went from like, let's go to, oh my God, what did I do, you know? Yeah. And uh, right at the last second, I slid my knife to him. I surrendered. Right as they were about to get all get up on me, I knew like if I swing my knife on these guys, they're going to kill me. So I slid my knife to him. I remember it smacked the first guy's feet, like it like bounced off his feet. And then all of a sudden, they were, they were on me. They were on me like, why don't rice, bro? And that first guy that I pulled the knife on, he was like trying to like, I'm talking about, he was trying to like literally kill me with that knife, bro. He, I was pushing off their chest with my feet and sliding on my back while my head's like still like bouncing off the concrete and like, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting messed up bad. Like I already, I already got hit twice, like. That's where I got that real bad one on my leg right there. Yeah, I see it. I don't know if you can see that. So but when you say hit, you're saying stab. Yeah. So you got and, stabbed uh, twice before that or during that? During that, I had already been like hit real bad like two or three times. And then uh, dude was like trying to like, he was trying to like completely wipe me out. Like take me out completely. He was trying to kill me. And uh... You know what saved me is uh, there's this dude that I was somewhat cool with. I wouldn't say we were like friends, but like we were somewhat like we, you know, we joked around here and there. Mm-hmm. His name was Yo Money. He came out of nowhere, bro, and laid out the guy that was trying to kill me. It was like I got him, folk, and like just got to pummeling me. But he was pummeling me with his fist, and not with not not a knife. Right, right. Him doing that right there, I think that's what saved my life. Because if he wouldn't have done that, that other guy would have, you know. Because like it's not like I could get up or you know stop any of it. I mean, I was there were so many of them, bro. I mean, what do you even do at that point, you know? So you're but, you're sitting there fighting for your, before he does that. You're sitting there like just fighting for your life to to keep him from killing you with the knife, and he's probably stabbing you as he's doing that a few times. I would assume. Yeah, you don't you don't really feel it when it's happening. You don't feel the knives going in and out. Hmm. How many you times really do you know. think he got you? He got me. I want to say about two or three times until dude laid him out. Yeah. Did now they... one of them, one of them really didn't go deep because it was like as I was like pushing back, like you know I'm like legitimately sliding on my back like four or five feet at a time, like as I'm like or. Uh, each time I connect with like their body good with my feet, I'm sliding pretty good. And like, yeah, because I mean, my adrenaline's running so hard. Right? I'm pretty sure I'm like screaming slash like yelling stuff at the same time. Like, you don't really know what you're saying or doing, or 
you know, you're just doing stuff and saying stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, but he connected. I remember that when that one went in, though, I remember seeing like that, like disappear in my leg, like, you know, and you don't realize how deep it is till you get to the bone and so you, you see it, you know? Was that the and first I time that you were just kind of sinking in and uh, like I just remember like looking dude in the eyes and I I knew right then like you know he wasn't gonna stop and like he was trying to kill me and when that yo money dude came up and, and laid him out like he literally like when I say laid him out like football laid him out bam knocked him clean on his back and I was like I got him folks when he was saying like I got him like I got him get out of the way I got him stay. Stay there. Mm-hmm. Basically, he was doing that because I think he was about to win an appeal or something. He didn't want him to kill me, you know, because there's a chance they might all get charged with murder if he kills me. Yeah. And uh, he didn't want that to happen. That's why he got involved. I don't think it was because we were friends or because he like liked me a lot or nothing. It wasn't like that. It was He knew that I was close to death and... He didn't want that to happen. He wasn't willing to sit there and, and watch me get killed after he was just involved on camera too. That's wild. So was that the first time you were ever stabbed? No. Nah, that was just the first time, like, it was me against a whole gang in a pod. Solo. And, I'm, I mean, if you saw it, bro, it was like something out of a movie. I mean, it, sounds it like was it. bad. What about on your end? Uh, was there any times where you attacked people with weapons? Like how how did and how did that come about? Like how did that go down? What made you do it? Did you know? I knew a crib was about to try to get me pretty good, uh, or I knew he was about that life. So I, didn't, you know, and I was scared. Honestly, I was scared. Uh, and I saw him from a distance in the hallway, and uh, out of nowhere, I just came running up. Like all right, like I see him. Like, that's crucial, like, eyesight, like, being able to see, like, you don't, what their name is irrelevant. Can you recognize their face from, you know, 100 feet or, you know, that's what matters. And, uh, yeah, I managed to get a hold of his dreads, and I did wear him out. Oh! <laughs> I mean, I managed to get a hold of his dreads, and, like, I'm, I went like that, and I was, you know... Like, it was ricocheting off of him, but... And that was probably the first time I ever really just got someone good, like, real good. Yeah. You know? But... Never have I, like... I've never, like, killed anybody, obviously. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. Right. I've seen people kill people and get away with it, but I've never seen anybody, you know... I've never seen anybody, like... You know, just, like, wide open, like, broad daylight, just kill someone on camera, and then walk away and not you know get more time or like you're not gonna get more time bro in there just cause you stab somebody you're not the only way you're gonna get more time is if they die and that's a wild that's a wild thing that I, I don't think most people know I didn't know that before we talked I figured yeah every time you do something like that you're probably getting a little bit of more time at least a little bit but that's not the case right no I mean, I've even seen people stab COs and not get more time, you know? Is it just too many incidents and they just don't want to deal with it all? Or what? what what's the reasoning, do you know? Um, I think it's... Now, the CO could, like, press charges and take it to a different level, but uh, at that point, I don't think they want to be involved anymore. They just want to leave and, and never come back. Yeah, so they, they, they probably they don't. don't do it. They Not don't. to mention a lot of these guys are capable of, like, sending folks to your house or, you know, like, so, like, at that point, just, like, you survived it, like, just act like it never happened and move on, you know, because you don't want to risk your family or anybody like that getting killed, so, yeah. I mean, like, our top dogs, I know for sure, like, you know, like, uh, like, got into it with somebody when he was at 201, it was, like, 20 five something years ago whatever he got into a, a co at 201 and he said and he told brother i want him on the news by morning and he was bro he was on the news by morning he's dead i mean his house got swiss cheese bro straight like that straight like that he was gone by the morning shit
he didn't even care, bro. Like he said, he did it. it was, you, the recordings on the on the phone. Like he didn't even say it on the cell phone. He said it on the on the the recorded the, line. The chat house phone. Yeah, it's recorded. He said, "I want him on the news by the morning." And the guy was on the news by the morning. Let, let's run through a couple more things, uh, and then we got some follower questions. So, prison tattoos. Did you get tattoos in prison? Were there people tatting up in there? Did you get most of yours there, before, after? Everything on my arms is is from in there. You know, I don't know if y'all can see that, but all right. So, everything, all my arms are completely from in there. So you know how they make ink, bro? That they, they do like soot, you know, like from a fire. Mm-hmm. They'll make like a candle, all right. And you know, like how they got like on the on the stalls, they got like a little a hole for where the toilet paper goes. Mm-hmm. They'll put like a candle in there, and it'll the heat will have soot, like a little black dust. It'll build up, and it'll hang from there. Like, all the way to where it's almost touching the flame. And, uh, they'll scrape that off into, like, an envelope and pour it in, like, a shampoo bottle. They'll add, like, a little bit of water, maybe a little bit of shampoo to make it thick. And stir it up, bro. That's ink. So, are, are yours gang-affiliated tattoos? Uh, yeah, I, I got a few. I got a few. I mean, I, you can see the Louis Vuitton somewhere right there. Mm-hmm. Really, you know what that means. Yep. Um I got the the five point crown right there. Is that can you see that again? I don't know if y'all can see that. I think I can see it enough. Yeah. Yeah, the five point crown's right there. Uh and then I got, you know, the Playboy bunny. So that's one of y'all symbols? Yeah. It's got the top hat and the cane and uh Oh, because you said yeah. play, player. That's I got you. That's where that yeah, comes from. Yeah, the Playboy Bunny. Let's, I'm going to go with like a little bit of a serious question right here. So some of the stuff that, that happened while you were in there, does any of it like still haunt you mentally? Does it keep you up at night, that type of thing? Um, I, um, I still have like bad dreams and stuff here and there. You know, I wake up to... Or like... In my sleep, I'll be, like, getting killed or something. Mm-hmm. But, you know, obviously I wake up and, you know, I, I snap out of it, come back to reality. But, like, I do have, like, pretty frequent dreams where I am not winning in the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that comes back. And it's usually like weird, like stuff you would, you know, that didn't happen or, or like, you know, it's like something that did happen, but like it happens way differently, like, mm-hmm. you know, but dreams are probably the biggest thing that stuck with me. Yeah. Okay. I wake up sweating like two or three times a month. Is it dreams so, that are based in, in prison? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, almost all of them are. All right, what about, uh, and then we, right after this question, we'll go into the follower question. So what about the, the homosexuality thing in prison and people getting forced to do things that they don't want, stuff like you see in movies? Did anything occur around you like that? I mean, it's definitely going on, but uh, it's not like it used to be. Back in the day, like, folks were getting, like, knocked out and raped and shit. Mm-hmm. It's not like that anymore. I mean, it still happens, but like it's, it's a lot more rare. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, it's more like if you're if you're getting you know the F word, mm-hmm. it's because you want to or like you're you're mm-hmm. choosing to do it. Yeah, it still happens every now and then. You run into a guy like I remember a dude named like OG Joe Cool. He was like a well-known dude for stuff like that. Like he did that. He was like that was his thing. Or, like, I knew a, a, a white guy that, like, his celly came up behind him, put a knife to his neck, and, like, yeah. while he was washing his hands, and, like, made him pull down his pants, and, like, he did it. Damn. And took it, bro, but, you know, that's still, like, it's it's not very common 
Mm-hmm. You only hear about it every blue moon. But, um, yeah, there is a lot of them, though, that, like, walking around with, like, fake hair, long hair, and, like, you know, got their shirt tied, like, in a knot, like, at their stomach, and, like, you know, the, the like, freaking walking like a girl, yeah, with their nails painted and stuff. Like, the, the Longest Yard movie type yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's a thing. For real. All right, so we'll, we'll move on to the follower questions now. Uh, so the first one, <laughs> of course, this, this one's uh, my girlfriend submitted this one. So uh, shout out to Linnea. Uh, <laughs> what's the best and worst meal you had in prison? Oh, my God. Best? Probably like Thanksgiving Day and then... then. They they whip up something pretty decent. Yeah. Um, or like Fourth of July it can be pretty good too. Like cause you get like hot dogs and hamburgers and stuff. So they give you they give you all some of the stuff you would normally have in those situations outside. Yeah, on holidays they they do actually try to make you feel like somewhat like you know at home. Mm-hmm. I mean obviously, bro, we we order commissary and we we make meals. You know, so like my favorite commissary meal would be uh. Probably when we do like tuna salad, like we we get tuna like with mustard and like we'll chop up our eggs, boiled eggs that we get at, from the the trays. Mm-hmm. Chop those up and then we'll throw mustard and mayo in there with the tuna. Throw the tuna pouches in there. Cut up pickle, a little bit of, like chopped onion, and uh, that's probably one of my favorite commissary meal, hands down. You know, and then you throw like a little bit on it, like a slice of bread, and you eat it like that. Yeah, it's fire, bro meal that they gave us though my favorite was when they would give us like you know every sunday we would get in cca not like the state uh facilities but the cca ones you know like that michael jordan's got like invested in and stuff like that Mm -hmm. they're all indoor we every sunday we would get chicken tray we get like baked chicken and uh it's pretty decent chicken on the bone you know that's pretty good, bro. You know, you can buy other people's, you know. Some people don't eat it. You can give them, like, two or three ramen noodle soups or something and, and get their chicken, too, on yours. And, you know, you can save a couple of them, throw them in a Ziploc bag. Or what about, That's pretty decent. What about the worst? The worst? I mean, there's been times where I was so hungry, bro, I ate out of the trash when I was in the hole, so... For real? Uh, yeah, like they were, they cut off all commissary and like we were only getting the trays. But the, on the weekend in the state, on the weekend you don't get lunch. So like, imagine just like eating breakfast and then dinner and then there's hardly anything on the tray anyway. You know, oh, it's hard to say. Probably uh, they call it goulash. Goulash is like. It's like cut up pieces of meat with like, it's the, it's it's what it sounds like, bro. It's like <laughs> slop. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's like slop, bro. And I mean, Oof. it's bad. It looks like something you would throw out there to like pigs, like you know. Yeah, like in a trough. It's, yeah, in a trough. It's exactly what it looks like, and it and it tastes like that too, bro. All right. So if you, this is a question from my girl as well. Uh. What would be your last meal if you were on death row? So you could have anything. I'd want my family to pick. Let your family pick? Yeah. That's a unique probably, answer. Probably I steaks. Yeah, I know for sure my dad, he'd probably say steak, you know, with like a baked potato or something. That's a fire meal. You know, like Outback, Outback, Outback steak with like a baked potato, you know, fully loaded or something. I don't know. Yeah, steak's my thing, bro. Like that and barbecue. Yeah, that or rendezvous barbecue from Memphis. So. Okay. It'd be tip or tat, one of those. Bro, I keep I keep some rendezvous sauce and, and seasoning in my my pantry here, even in uh, Dallas. All right. Yeah. So this one's from my boy Miles. So at Slim Jim on Instagram, what's something you learned in prison that people on the outside should know? Mind your own business. Hmm. Stay out of other people's other people's business that that'll get you in trouble, huh? I mean, 
mean, that's just crucial, bro. I feel like that's a day-to-day life thing you should learn, like, and that just happened my dad rec- with my dad recently in a parking lot. And someone got it, uh, you know, pulled in my dad's spot. Like, as he was about to back in, he pulled forward to back in, and someone... Oof. And while they were arguing about it, some other dude just randomly came up and chose the other guy's side. And my dad was <laughs> like, a whole attention went from him to, to the guy that just got in my business, you know? Yeah. And For like, no reason. that's just how it is in there too, bro. You don't do that. You know, if and it ain't got nothing to do with you, bro, stay out of it. Probably bigger they consequences. Turn on to you. Big consequences you in there. You're like helping somebody, and now all of a sudden they're like, what? And they're on your ass. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't want to get in, staying in, minding your own business is, is crucial. All right. This is a question from my friend Chris at Chris McCulley1. On Instagram, how long did it take to go to sleep without any worries? Uh, I don't, I don't know if that ever really, you know. That I don't think that ever really just happens. Okay. Um, you know, the, it, it's hard. To, it, it's you wouldn't think it would be like this, but like if you're in solitary. And, like, sure enough, you're going to go crazy after a while. Like, it's going to feel like the walls are caving in on you. But um, when you know that, like, no one can get to you and, like, you can just sit there and you can relax and, like, you don't have to look over your shoulder or, like, listen to, like, because you never fully go to sleep when you're in a general population because you have to hear what's going on in the pod. Solitary was probably the only place I ever was just like actually able to just let go, you know, and and relax. Damn, man, you know? that's that's wild to have that experience. Yeah, when it, when when there's there's no way for anybody to get to you, and you ain't gotta always be listening or head on a swivel, then you can finally just like it, it's almost like weight off your shoulders, you know. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this question comes from Olivia Seashells. Uh, that's the Instagram at how many people yeah. in there claim their innocence? Claim their innocence. Um, you'd be surprised how many people, Olivia, that uh, are actually innocent. Is that what you were saying? Is that what you, she's basically getting at? Like, yeah, either. either they just kind of stand on that, that they're innocent, I guess. You'd be surprised, bro, how many people, like, genuinely aren't supposed to be there. Yeah. And, uh, like, and eventually they do prove it and get back in there and they reverse it. Some never do, though. Yeah. And, uh, it's crazy, though, like, when you, like, hear, like, what happened and, like, why, or... It's just mind-blowing to think that, like... Like, these people really don't belong here, you know? Yeah. And, and, I don't know, it just hits you different when you know, like, you're there because you should be, but, you know, they're there and they shouldn't be and they're still there. That's that's hard to fathom, you know? Like, what that must feel like. Yeah, that's got it. That's a, that's always something that I've thought about would be, like, a helpless, fi- I mean, obviously, if you, if you can prove it, you can try to fight it and everything, but for a time, for a certain amount of time, it's got to feel helpless, or if you feel like you can't, you're not getting progress, like that, you know? Yeah, like, some people just give up, bro, you know, and, uh, that's something you can't do if you ever think you'll stand a chance at, like, reversing it, but, yeah, like, a lot of people just, they just say, screw it, and, and they just don't, they stop trying. And at that point, like, the day you do that, I mean, you're going to be in deep depression from the, therefore, for me, I knew I deserved what I got, but these guys know they don't deserve it, and they're still going through it. This one is from my mom, actually, and it says, uh, how did you go into prison affect your mom? Uh, I remember you uh, mentioning that. Um, it's brutal, bro. I mean, no mother really deserves to kind of experience something like that. Um, 
I mean, it was bad, bro. It was bad. Like, the guilt, you know, the guilt you put behind that, like, putting your parents through that, it's just, the words can't even describe, bro. I mean, like, it broke her. It broke her bad. You know? And just as much my pops, you know? Like, no parent deserves to go through that. You know, them questioning whether or not their son would you know, live to see another day or, you know, would catch a murder charge and never go home or, you know what I mean? Right. Like, sleepless nights were probably, um, like, just never went away. It, it really did damage Tyler. Yeah. It really did. Like, I'm talking about gray hair will start popping up three times as fast like that. I mean, it's bad. Do you, you think know? it, did it ever, does it feel now like it's, been able to be repaired or it's anywhere close to what it was yeah to a certain extent i mean but then once the damage is done it's done bro you know there's really no reversing it let's see this is from my boy brett thomas at b thomas one two three zero outside of being confined does prison feel like a punishment Honestly, no. Like, uh, there's a lot of times, like, for the for the majority, bro. No, it doesn't. Like, it's like a world inside of a world. Mm-hmm. Think, about, think about it like that. It's like a city inside inside of a city. Like, the only thing you're not allowed to have is cars, and you know, like, there's a chance that your girl might not be, like, you might not be able to get one of the female COs to do something for free or you know what I mean like other than that you can have anything you want like you can have phones you know and money can buy anything almost in there you know mm-hmm. like one thing you're not getting in there bro is a car bro pretty much that's basically what I, how I put it damn any drug you want to find, uh, I mean there's people with iPhones like um, you know, the TVs, I've seen people with fire sticks in their TV, like, you can watch whatever you want to watch, like, you know? <laughs> All I right. mean, it's really, it's really like, uh, like a world inside of a world. That's the best way to put it. So, another question from Brett. What do you think caused you to have the mindset that ended up with you getting in prison? Um... The mindset, something to prove. Something to prove, what you mentioned earlier, kind of. Yeah, if any kid could ever take something from all this, is, uh, yeah, you don't have anything to prove, bro, you know? Like, it's not going to get you anywhere. Um, if you think you're tough, you're not. You know, you'll find out real quick that there's always somebody tougher or someone that cares less. You know, I mean, there's people that really do not care whether or not they die or they live or they catch a life sentence or they don't. And you will meet them in there. You don't want to run into somebody like that, bro, you know? You don't got nothing to prove. So I think that's probably the biggest thing is, like, because nowadays it's, like, all hyped up, like, you know? Like, I'm I'm gangster. I'm about that life, you know? I towed a pistol and I do this or that. Like, I'll shoot this thing here. Bro, screw all that. As soon as you get in there, bro, you're not going to have that pistol, bro. And you, you might get thrown in the cell with somebody that could snap you in two, bro. You know, like, do you want to go through that? You don't have to go through that, though, if you don't want to. Right. You know, and, like, you're going to get, it's just, I don't know how to put it other than it's not worth it, you know? Mm-hmm. It's a miracle, like a miracle. I made it through that, and I got out. One of the million chances I got out, bro. I thought for sure. There were so many times where I thought I was gonna spend the rest of my life in there, or I was gonna die, or you know. And I just like if 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 you can avoid it, bro, avoid it. If there's anything you can take from that, like just think twice, like. When I wish I would have like saw this video when I was 17 or before I went and did some stuff like that or before I took Xanax and did something stupid. 
And I wish I would have, like, watched it and, like, actually, like, sunk in because, like, I didn't realize, like, how deep of that water I jumped in once I, but once I was in it, I was already drowning. And, like, it it really took me down through there, bro. Like, I still struggle to this day. I'm a felon. Finding a good job is not easy for me. You know what I mean? I still have bad dreams. I got PTSD extremely bad. Like, if you move too quick around me in a store, like, I will, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not exactly, like, normal to an to a, you know an extent. And also, like, I struggled with drugs while I was in there, too, you know? And uh, that carries with me, too. And, like, all that could have been avoided had I just, like, thought twice about, you know, the stuff I was doing or, like, trying to prove that I was about that life or, you know. But it turned out, bro, I wasn't about it at all, bro. Once <laughs> I got around people that were really about it, then it registered, like, I was like, I thought I was, bro, but, like, I'm not. Like, I'm not I'm not about it like these guys are. Like, they don't care, bro. Yeah. And I do care. Yeah, you didn't, I care. You didn't want to throw your life away. No, bro. Like, once I realized, like, how quick it, it could go zero to 100, bro, I was like, I thought I was, but I'm not, like. I'm not willing to 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 lose my life to this. I'm not willing to spend the rest of my life in here. Like, if I gotta look like a bitch or a hoe, or whatever, bro, I'll do it, bro. Cause I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend the rest of my life with these guys, bro. I'm not I'm not doing it. You know, and that sunk in. That sunk in real yeah. quick. That that mindset, and then you know. God wanting you to be to be here and to be wherever else you need to be to spread that message is 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 why you got through it. I think you know what I mean. Both of yeah. those things. I genuinely believe that the only reason I made it through what I made it through is because uh, I don't think my like faith or like my relationship with God ever wavered. Really, mm-hmm. um, I was. I was always, like, in the back of my head, still, like, aware of the fact that, like, he's got me, you know? Like, I'm here for a reason. There's, he's, there's a plan. He's got a plan for me. Whatever I got to go through to see that through, I'm willing to do it. But I believe that that's the only reason I'm still here and talking to you today is because I never really questioned God's plan or or why i was going through what i was going through it was all for a reason and i believe that i believe that god knew that i was going to make it through that and um yeah i think that's the only reason why i'm here like that's crucial you have to be everything like yeah you have to be like for sure you know that he's got you and if you know that bro then you can do anything you can you can survive anything and honest to God, bro, like, you, if you didn't find them before, you'll find them in there, you know? Like, whatever you think you, you know, think of God or whatever, like, it's almost like you, you're going to stand right in front of him and you're going to, he's going to give you a chance to say, come with me or, you know, whatever I got to go through today, hey, I, 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 open, I, I welcome it with open arms. Let's, let's do it. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it be me even dying, I welcome it. Let's go. Because that's your plan. Let's do it. Right. And that's crucial, bro. Yeah, and he, he's, 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 undefe- he's undefeated. He's undefeated. Undefeated. All right, so real yeah. quick, we got uh, what I just call the game. So I've got a bunch of – got a list of things. It's just – this or that. I'm gonna name two things, and you just gotta tell me without giving your reason why which one you pick. All right. All right. It'll be a quick list, uh, just a something to put in the middle, kind of break things up. All right. Watches or chains. Chains. All right. Early bird or night owl. Night owl. Pretty face or banging body. Pretty face. All right. America first or tend to the needs of the world? America. All right. Rifles or pistols? Pistols. Trump or Biden? Trump. Football or basketball? 
Football. Rap or country? <laughs> Rap. All right. White girls or Latinas? <laughs> White girls. All right. Uh, light or dark liquor? Gold or silver jewelry? I'm on Shine Time Podcast, so I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm gonna go silver or platinum. <laughs> All right. Uh, would you rather be a famous pro MMA fighter or a famous rapper? Pro MMA? What? All right. Would you rather have fame or money? Fame. Fame? All right, would you rather have a housewife or a working wife? A working wife. Working wife. All right, that's the end of the game. So it's just a little quick this or that, let people know a little bit more about you in a different way. All right, two topics left. We're going to go through some tips that you would have for other people, and then we'll go through the topic of future, your future. So... First day tips when people walk in. What's some stuff they that they do not do? Some stuff that they do do. First day tips. Um, all right. As soon as you get in there, you have to figure out what set you're going to. You know. All right. So if you're not affiliated, as soon as you go to the set or you get in the pod, you need to figure out where you're going. You need to figure out who's in that cell. And first, uh, if you're not affiliated, you need to find out if they're even okay with you coming in that cell. They might say, I don't know. Because a lot of facilities, people don't take cellies. They won't accept them. Mm. You know? So, like, you're not going to move in. If they say no, bro, you're not going to move in. Like, you know? So, if you just try to yeah. walk in before knowing or talking to someone, they then it's going to be a problem immediately? Possibly. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. They don't know you and... <laughs> You didn't get told you could come in that cell. There might be something serious going on in that cell, like you know, big money operation or anything, bro. You can't just move in there without permission, bro. They will smoke you. So that permission got, for yeah, that. Yeah, if you get in the way of that, you're you're instantly you're an opposition. Yeah. So permission is is dictated based on the people. The, the inmates, not the not the people who assigned you that cell. It's not, it don't matter what the CO said. Gotcha. Okay. The inmates run that. All right. What about like any chow hall tips? Like where do you eat at? Like first day things there. What if you don't know where you're supposed to sit? You'll know as soon as you get in there. You'll, you'll be able to tell. <laughs> so is it? Are all tables taken by a? A group, or is there a spot where if you don't know, like, well, I guess I'll go over here. You'll know, you'll know the table that anybody can go to. Okay, so there'll be a table that anyone can go to. Damn, hold on. Yeah, you'll know where all the unaffiliated people are sitting now. Are people looking to test you immediately, or, or is it kind of like if you don't start problems, you'll be all right? Tested. It don't matter if you pass the test the first time. There's always gonna be someone else that don't believe you. Okay. Uh, bro, you can prove it over and over. It doesn't matter. There's, there's gonna be someone else say I didn't see it. Yeah. You gonna have to show me, bro. Okay. What about if they're if they're open to like gang life? What are the tips for like how 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 would they even go about trying to like join a clique? Like how how would they go about that? Like is there is there a certain way to approach them? Do they have to approach you? No, you carry yourself just carry yourself like a man. They'll approach you. They'll approach you. Okay. Have some balls. Have some balls. Don't get in depth. Carry yourself like a man. Crucial, don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. That's probably number one rule. Okay. Don't get in debt. Do not get in debt. That will get you killed. 
in a heartbeat. I don't care if it's four soups. That's four times someone could have went and not hungry. If you order those four soups, you better have those four soups. Mm. Like, be one of the biggest rules. Don't get in debt. Okay. But yeah, just carry yourself like a man. Stay to yourself. Try to hustle or whatever. Keep a little hustle. Don't get in debt. Someone tries you. Stand your ground. Be a man. Handle your business. Okay. Yep. And then once they see that, they're going to try to pull you in. All right. Do you have any tips for someone if they if they don't want anything to do with the gang life? Is there a path for them to be all right? Stay in the cell. <laughs> the whole time? Just know when to come out, when to stay in. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, watch TV. Do your own thing, man. You know, you and you really can do that. Like, I wish I would have done that. That's the, that's honestly that's the move. Stay in yourself. Watch TV. Cook you a little meal here and there. Like you know, if you're in a pod where they're trying to take your stuff or your food, bro. If you stay out of the way, eventually your security level will go down. You'll go somewhere where you can, you know, work outside the fence or, mm. you know, stuff like that. Like, stay out of the way. Get in a program or something. Go, you know, go to a, a drug program or. Even if you don't even do drugs, just go. You know, where it's structure, you know? Yeah. And uh, um, you just stay out of the way, bro. Like, stay in the cell, watch TV, cook meals, every chance you get. If there's something going on out there, or like, you know, there's gang members in the shower and stuff, wait to take a shower later, bro. You know, like, just do not get in their way. Whatever you do, don't get in their way. Okay. So... What helped you cope the best with like being locked up outside? So we mentioned faith, and that's that's you said is like the biggest thing that kept you uh, like mentally still okay. Outside of that, what helped you cope? Like, were there things you did with your free time? Like, you know, this is a bad excuse, but probably drugs. Drugs. I mean, that's not what it should be. But it's reality, like, once you get kind of sucked into that, you you know what I mean? Then, like, that's all there is to do, you know? Like Because that's really all there is to do is that, watch TV. and But you get burnt out on lifting weights or you're burnt out on watching TV. Or, and the drug game is just, like, it's so rampant. Like, I don't know, like, it's just always something to do, you know? And, um... Like, it passes time, though. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend it. You'll end up in debt, and you'll... It'll cause a lot of problems for you, but as far as, like, why I... I mean, there's plenty of days that were just a blur, you know? They just kind of, like, flew by, and you you don't even realize, like, it happened. Mm -hmm. It's because you were intoxicated, probably. For a lot of people, that's liquor, or, you know, their cigarettes, or whatever, but... I mean, truth be told, bro, that was, for me, that was, it was drugs. You know, I really, really went down through the trenches when it came to, like, you know, and uh, some of the biggest game members are the the top dogs, are, they're all doing it too, you know? But sitting in the cell smoking like weed with your, your, your brothers or whatever, passes time and Y'all are, like, shooting the shit, like, you know. That's probably, like, the most go-to thing. So what about, like, uh, before we move on to the future, the topic of future, um, speaking of drugs and you saying that that was something that you, you know, dabbled in in your time there, is that something that that's hard for you to, to not be addicted to nowadays? Is there things that you got hooked on there that you had to, had to break when you got out? Tyler, I struggle with it to this day, bro. That's why I say it's not worth it. It does make time go by a lot faster in there. But screw that, bro. I mean, that's something that never really goes away, you know? Mm-hmm. 
No, they say once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Same thing they say in NA meetings, bro. You know, once you have that problem, it never goes away, you know? Yeah. You can suppress it, bro. You can suppress it all you want, but it never goes away completely, you know? It's hard to explain, but uh, it's more like... It's, it's something that always kind of just lingers over you, you know? It's like a, a rainy cloud or whatever just waiting to just start pouring on you. Yeah. Like, it's always in the back of your head, you know? What, what like, helps you What helps you the most with staying away from it now? Is it meetings? Or is there uh, other, other things? I used to be kind of involved in meetings. Um, no, I think that goes back to faith. Faith. I mean, you really have to you have to dig deep and find out who you are and and what God means to you. And uh, every time I veer away from God, excuse me, every time I veer away from God, that's when I fall off, bro, and I and I go down a dark path. But when I find Him again, I snap out of it. Or right, and sometimes it takes you know time or. I mean, it doesn't happen overnight, you know, but I think that's the most crucial thing to, like, just knowing, you gotta keep it real, you gotta be real with yourself, bro, and be real with him. If you can't do that, bro, you can't do anything, you know, and anything in life, I, I believe. So, yeah, I still struggle with it to this day, like, temptation is very, very hard for me, especially when it comes to stuff like that, because, like, that, it, that was my go-to in there. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I went through a lot of depression and stuff like that. I never thought I was going to make it home or, you know. And I, I kind of gave up at, at certain points. But, um, yeah, faith in God is crucial, bro. Like, I found a church out here. It's called Generation Church. Um, as soon as I walked in, I, I just felt like this, 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 like, overwhelming, you know, sense of relief and I, I believe that like stuff like that those are all feelings that are like like I was meant to feel that like and the reason I feel that is because that presence is there and obviously it's not like a coincidence I mean that's that's him telling me this is where you belong you know and not in some trap house or something like whatever you know you know you get a bad vibe and you go to a place you shouldn't be mm-hmm or vice versa yep and I even I think the I think the the vibe of you, that you shouldn't be there is him too. As he's yeah, telling you that you exactly. shouldn't be there, you know what I mean? Exactly. You know immediately I don't belong here. Mm-hmm. And that's his way of saying like, "Hey, bro, that ain't you, man." Right. That ain't why I put you on this earth. We talked you about know? that on Instagram as well. Yep. Yeah, I firmly believe that. Uh, I'm I'm real good about reading like vibes and uh, uh my I don't know my gut instinct is pretty strong, and I I'll just show up somewhere or I'll meet some people and I'll just say you know what I got? I just got this feeling like you know I shouldn't be here and if I don't react on that usually something bad happens. As far as the transition from prison to normal life again, uh, how has that gone for you? What are some things you might have done right or wrong that you would want to tell people? Uh, when I got out, it was like it was like an animal busting out of a cage almost. Like I felt like it, it didn't feel real. I guess like it almost didn't really sink in that I was free. Mm-hmm. You know, like I almost felt like I was still in there, but like. I, like, I don't know, like, when I say animal busting out of the cage, is like, I didn't know how to, like, control anything, like, you know, because I was so used to being controlled for me. So, I missed all my early 20s, I missed my college years and stuff, you know, so when I got out, it was like, full throttle, you know, that was a huge mistake, though, like, all I did was start creating more problems for myself. You know, my driving record screwed up. Like, 
stuff like that. If you you don't want to do that, you know what I mean. Nowadays, having a, a, a solid license is is major for a career or anything. You know, you have to have it. Yeah, when I got out, bro, I, I was wide open. I wish I would have done that differently. Um, I, I told myself I was going to be like all controlled and focused and stuff, but it just didn't go like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, it was almost like an overwhelming feeling. Like I, The fact that I was free, I couldn't even believe it. You know? I, I, honestly, it was like I... It, it never really fully just like sunk in. I still wake up sometimes till this day like, you know, damn, like, I can't believe I made it, you know? What am I going to do from here? You know, what would God want me to do? What could I do, you know, productive or, or to make up for lost time or, you know, get a career going or something like that? And that's just not what I did at first, you know? When I first got out, I was like, what club should I go to? You know, what, you know, what people should I hang out with that like to party a lot? Or I was linking up with people I was in prison with, like a bunch of brothers, stuff like that. Like, you know, touching stuff that I shouldn't have been touching, you know, stuff that could easily put me back. And, and uh, you know, I won't go into detail, but you know how it goes, bro. Like, you get sucked into that lifestyle really easy again. Like you didn't just do that time, you know? It's almost like it never even happened. But then again, it's also like, felt like forever, you know? Mm -hmm. But like, you have to remind yourself, bro, like you just did that because of this type of stuff. Bro, don't go down that road again, you know? Yeah. Remember all those times you were like, praying to God that like, this would someday be over. And you finally made it, you you actually gonna go back and like, play fire like that again? Come on, bro. That's crazy. I mean, that's like insanity. You know, when they say you do the same thing over and over, expecting a different result? Mm -hmm. That's what insanity is. For me to go take Xanax and be like a walking zombie, you know, is what caused me to do the crimes the first time. For me to take a Xanax again is just absurd. Yeah, make that choice from a sober state, knowing like what had happened from it in the past. Yeah. No, and that's what caused me to do the eight years. That's crazy. But I did. You think it's going to be different, bro? No, it's not, bro. You're going to do something stupid again. Like, it's not going to be different. There's somebody out there that needs to hear that, so that's definitely going to be something I clip. Once you get out and you're a felon at that point, you know, you've got a record and, and all of that, do you feel like, in your experience, the system is set up to to keep you down, or do you feel like, the proper resources are out there. It's all just all about how you mentally look at it. Um, you can dwell in your sorrows, bro. I think, uh, yeah, I think it, it's it's a mind thing. There's a lot of times where I like procrastinate and uh, expect people to feel sorry for me or like want to help me, bro. But like, come on, bro, just get off your ass and go figure it out, you know? It's a mind thing for sure. It's it's up to you, bro. Do you want to fix this, and, or do you want to redeem yourself, or are you cool with just sitting here and being uh, what used to be a fuck up? You know. I'm glad to hear that from not having experienced it. I was curious what your what your answer would be, what your experience would be, because I don't know what it you know what roadblocks and whatnot there is, or how easy or hard it is in that situation. But I'm glad to hear that. It's kind of more on the individual, at least in your opinion, you know, and how they handle it. I um, think someone like you, Tom, I mean, you're like super consistent. You got a lot of, like I said, willpower. You're real consistent. Seem to be like extremely like strong-minded. I think it'd even be easier for you, you know. Like I, I believe you could go through something like that and then come out and bounce back like it was nothing, you know. I was very uh, weak-minded at, at times, you know. I, I let things get the best of me mentally, and uh, it was hard for me to control it. And uh, you just don't, uh, you don't seem to be that type, you know. You seem like you that type of stuff would just bounce off you, like, you know, like it was nothing. You know, I'd like that's to crucial, bro. Yeah, crucial. I, 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 it's taken me a long time, you know, for most of my life to like 
harden and harden and harden, you know, mentally to like get as consistent as I am now. I would like to think that that what you're saying is true. Hopefully I never have to face that situation, but uh, I could see where that would be very valuable, you know what I mean, to have that type of mentality. Yeah, it definitely puts you at a different uh, level of the game. I mean, because I'm somebody that's been through something like that and made it out of it, you know. Like, there's not much you can throw at me or, or do around me that I haven't seen or, like, experienced in a certain field. My mental toughness wasn't there a lot of times, bro. It really wasn't, you know. And man, that's why I caught the time in the first place. I wasn't mentally tough. I wasn't capable of saying no or, you know, walking away from something when I should have. And uh, I think that's what separated me from you was that you did walk away from the things that you should have and I didn't. That's why you were more mentally tough. I think that you have to be able to acknowledge that. Once you acknowledge that, then you can fix that, you know? Yeah. I agree 100%. All right, so what what is something that you missed the most that you appreciate more now? Maybe something simple, um, something you didn't get to eat in there, something you didn't get to do in there. My mom asked me that one time at visit. Uh, she asked me uh, if you could do anything or, like, if, if, what do you miss more than anything? And I said, I think it was just, like, just, like, talking to people like people I know like I don't know anybody in here until I came in here you know yeah I miss just talking to like people that I know like people I went to school with or just like seeing people that are like normal and you know yeah like I would have bro I would have gave a left arm bro to run into you in there or something bro just to talk to you in there <laughs> just to like I mean I don't want you to be in there right but, right, like, right I would just saw you I probably uh-huh. broke down crying, you know, just to know, like, oh, my God, like, I have somebody that, like, you know, like, somebody I know from outside of here that I can sit here and, like, vent to or, like, you know, just be there and just be there. You just be there just standing around next to me, and I would feel, like, a million times better, bro. Just- That's the type of stuff you really take for granted. You know, yeah. it really doesn't sink in. You don't realize like how much you miss that type of thing. So it's gone. We all, I think pretty much everyone takes that for granted every day because they've never had it taken away, you know, and they may never have it taken away or they won't until someone passes away or, you know, something like that happens. But that makes a lot of sense what you're saying. Yeah, bro. It's, I can't stress it enough, like, the people you call your friends and um, or the guys that like you know even if like y'all weren't like super close or anything but like you looked up to them growing up or stuff like that like you don't take it for granted like you know because once it's gone it's gone and once I like lost that and that ability like to reach out to people or like people just like you know forgot about me I guess a lot of a lot of people did, you know. Mm-hmm. But that kind of hit home, bro, and I and I get it why they did. Cause like, why would you even want to associate yourself with somebody like that? You know, that did something so stupid. That ain't who who you are, though. But at the same time, they don't know that, you know. People change, you know. And uh, bro, I missed that. Like, I missed being able to talk to like you or like, like bad, bro, really bad. Like, that was all I thought about. It was like, you know, I can't wait to, like, reach out to this guy or I can't wait to see him or run into this person at the store. Or, like, just, just simple, like... Yeah, how are you doing? Just small you, talk. Bro. Like, yeah, it's great to see you. Like, literally great to see you. Like, I... Like, almost make you, like, just want to, like, collapse into their arms, bro. Like, I haven't seen you in so long, but I missed you, bro. I really did. That type of thing. Man. That's wild. That's going to hit a lot of people. Um, so this is the last question I have for you. So is there anyone that that you would like, or it could be a few people, you'd like to shout out for supporting you along the way or you felt like 
did their part in in either contacting you in there or uh, helped you get through everything? Uh, all right, that's that's tough. That's a tough one, bro. I, I had a pretty solid group too. Um, from first and foremost, bro, my family. Jeez, uh, my family was. I mean, every step of the way, they had ride or die, bro. They stuck with me, bro. And I, I really, I really dragged them through hell. I mean, I really did, bro. And uh, that's beautiful. A lot, of, a lot of people's family wouldn't have done that, bro. You know. And uh, mine did though. That's real, man. That's real love. But, uh, yeah. And, uh, I, I think they knew knew they knew who you who you really are. You know what I mean? That that they knew you from birth. They knew that person was was in there. You know, it's just decisions along the way. Probably that's my assumption. Yeah, and uh, none of that phased them. You know, they knew who I was, like you said. Yeah, and they just they didn't care. Even you know, they didn't care, bro. They just knew that they loved me, and they were. They were like, we're going to get through this. This is small to a giant, you know. It kept me going, bro. Real talk. That's special, and, bro. Uh, a lot of people ain't got that, bro. A lot of people ain't got that in there. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't really sink in until you, you know, I think I got my argument with my mom or something on the phone one time, and some dude came up to me and was like, bro, that's your mom. He was like, I ain't got a mom. He's like, I'd do anything to call my mom. And then that's when it sunk in, like, you know, I got to snap out of it, bro. I'm lucky to have these people, you know? But then, uh, you know, also I had, like, like Mason Moore would answer the phone, bro. Jay Benson answered the phone. Uh, send me money. Mass Bain, Leighton Davenport. Send me money, Chase Carroll. Send me money, Roger Petty before he died. Yeah, rest in peace, Roger. Yeah. Um. Uh, Peyton Moore, Cole Reynolds, uh, let's see. Jordan Whittington. God bless Jordan Whittington. I mean, that man really, really was there for me. Out of nowhere, too. Like, he wouldn't answer the phone for six months straight, but when he did, though, bro, he would come through clutch. I mean, he'd save me for real. And, I, and I, I'm not just talking about money, too. Like, whenever they would answer the phone, they'd, like, sit there and talk to me for a while, like, hours or something, you know? Uh, who else? I mean, I, got, I had a really solid group, bro. So my really solid group. And, like... I almost felt bad calling a lot of people, you know. I, I tried to avoid it, but uh, there were some times where I was just desperate to talk to somebody, you know. Yeah. So I would just call. But uh, I'd like to shout out uh, Haley Malone. Haley Malone, uh, he had like a little thing while I was gone. Uh, uh, Elizabeth Dodo. That's who I was talking to, uh, and Greta. Whenever I went away, when I first went away, mm-hmm. um, believe it or not, Elizabeth Dodo came and visited me at two hundred one. Oh yeah, yeah. She's in Dallas now, actually. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, stuff like that, bro. You don't forget about stuff like that, you know. Oh, I bet that's burnt in your memory, huh? Oh yeah, it's engraved, bro. I would still reach out to Taylor Feathers, you know, that was my girl in my senior year. So I kind of screwed that one up. She sent me a letter just wishing me good luck, stuff like that. <laughs> Tell me I'll holler at you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I remember that one like it was yesterday. Uh, man, who, uh, who else was really just there for me like that, man? I had a lot, bro. I could shout them all out, bro. It goes on for days. Uh, I'm talking about like people that really just were there, bro. 
Um, and I mean, I miss Drew Diller, bro. I probably, I miss him more than anybody, honestly. Losing those guys while I was in there was probably my my toughest moments. Yeah, I was gonna say that's probably a, a, a an interesting feeling, not one that you ever expected because you don't. No one expects to lose friends at, at that at our age or any of the ages you went through along the way before you come out. You know, you just think one day when I get out, I'm gonna see them, I'm gonna talk to them, I'm gonna call them, on this and that. Um, multiple people we've had kind of an iron uh, and an odd number of people pass away from our high school since we left in my opinion um i can probably count six or seven that i was actual like talk to regularly friends with you know it's like bro genuinely like that that was like my brother bro it really was and uh even though he didn't answer the phone like that while i was gone i knew it was because he was wide open but i don't know it was like an unspoken like understanding like you just kind of know that mm-hmm. they're waiting on you, mm-hmm. and when he didn't make it, it was right before I got out too, and that, like that broke me. Mm. I ain't gonna lie. I, I remember when Jake Benson told me on the phone, you know, what what had happened. And I was already like in the hole or in solitary or whatever. <laughs> and I remember he told me, bro, and like, I that's when I really kind of like fell into the drugs real bad after that, you know. I really went off the deep end behind him. Mm. Yeah. Roger Petty, too. Paid more. All those were hard. And then when I got out, Cole. Cole, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, we're talking about people, bro. I spent, like, you know, thousands, thousands of days and hours, you know, growing up with, you know? Mm hmm. So those hit home. And my dad's friend so solid all the people that wrote letters to the judge for me uh, I had like so many letters to the judge bro saying like hey this isn't who what you see on that camera or in this case that's not who he is and bro a lot of that's what really really saved me in, in, in court bro it really did and once you once you read it and you see that type of support, I mean, it hits you different, you know? Oh, I bet. Rick Carroll, Roger Petty Sr., all them, Jimmy Freeze. Uh, I mean, I could keep going, you know? My dad's friend, Justin, uh, Justin Headley, played baseball for Boston. Uh, I mean, these are guys that, like, went to bat for me, you know? Put their put their name and their their word on on the line and, and stamped it that like you know he doesn't deserve what he's about to get or whatever he's not that type of guy and vouch for me you know yeah bro you really find out who's there and like a lot of people that you thought were like your best friends aren't yeah they're they're not they're best not friends through great, anything you know? yeah. Like, I don't know, like, everybody was, like, pretty much, like, cool. Like, you know, they would answer the phone here and there or whatever. But, I mean, you got to think, bro, I was calling some of these guys every day, you know. I was relentless. Like, you know, I was going crazy or I was bored or, you know. And some people just couldn't do it, you know. And I understood that, you know. Like, they're busy. They got stuff going on. They're pursuing their career, their life. They got kids now this, that, and the third, like, you can't expect anybody to, like, put that to the side to be there for you, but, I mean, a lot of people, you know, they did, I mean, they they genuinely were there when they didn't have to be. It's a beautiful you know, thing, man. That a lot can... of people, like, treated me differently whenever I got out, or they looked at me like they didn't know me, or they didn't want to know me, or they, you know, never talked to me again after what they heard happened, or they see me and they act like they didn't know who I was or, you know. Yeah. That's one thing I can say about you too is like, bro, you never like acted like I was different or like, like I wasn't who I was. Like, 
you didn't treat me differently because of what you had heard or you know you always still was like bro that's Blake like I know Blake like Blake good people you know and that means a lot bro real talk cause I know what I did wasn't right and like I deserve what I got for that I believe that but that's not who I am deep down you know and for someone to acknowledge that and like treat me as such I don't forget stuff like that you know you know what type of person are you bro behind closed doors bro integrity stuff like that 100% the stuff God would care about yeah you know that's the type of stuff that matters bro I found that out the hard way, but that's that's all that matters. For uh, anyone that wants to to kind of like follow your journey or to get in contact with you, uh, what's your social media handle? Uh, it's, it's Blake Bennett, I T S. Like it's Blake Bennett, B L A K E B E N N E T T, and uh, Facebook's Blake Bennett, uh, Snapchat Bennett. 2021 100 um man you can reach out to me on any of that stuff uh it wouldn't matter what it was you can reach out to me on my email 11.blakebennett at gmail.com if anybody ever needed to talk to somebody or like before they thought about doing something stupid or committing suicide or doing some drugs or like anything like that bro like I'm pretty sure I could relate just holler at me bro or just think twice about it or call somebody like Tyler bro it, it could be the difference between life or death or losing a decade of your life you know yeah yeah man that's serious stuff and uh look I think now we're we're both on, on a a path where we're we're light, lights for people, you know, and maybe in different ways, but we're still both lights for people, and we're still both carrying a torch for, for for Team God, you know what I mean? And that's the most important thing that brings us that's all together, um, and chasing that, chasing being like what God wants us to be. So, with that Absolutely. being said, bro, it's a hell of a podcast. I'm definitely more uh, down for like a part two at some point whenever we want to do that we can have a whole new set of questions and everything else but i think it was badass bro i appreciate you being on yeah yeah bro thanks for having me on here man and seriously yeah we should do another one it ain't got to be all about you know doing time or nothing like that yeah but yeah what you said team god like i think that that's what it all boils down to bro and i think that's why me and you are so like eye to eye we see like on a certain level, bro, like, we understand, we get it, bro, that's what it all boils down to, bro, it's about him, bro, real talk.